we upgrade our mobiles, we upgrade our computers, we upgrade our vehicles, we upgrade our TVs, cell phones, but we don't upgrade our values and mindset. There are a few values which I believe that we all should have if we want to become version 2.0. There are some, some basic things that you followed in your previous life in version 1.0 that got you a certain, limb, certain far. But if you want to go to version 2.0 and if you want to go, you need to upgrade, right? We upgrade our mobiles. We upgrade our computers, we upgrade our vehicles, we upgrade our TVs, cell phones, but we don't upgrade our values and mindset. We get limited with that. And then we hope that something magical will happen in our life. But we don't upgrade our mindset. We don't, don't upgrade our values. We just look at, look at the external things. So let's upgrade our values to a new values, which are version 2.0. And these are some of the values which I followed in my passion printer, as you see here t-shirt, as you see some of the values I follow in my passion printer or even one crore coach. Some of those values, which I think everybody should abide by and everybody should live, breathe, eat only those values. One of those values, which I believe is What is this? No negativity. Everybody together. What is it? No, no negativity. negativity. No negativity. You know, we want to build an environment, right? I want you to imagine the environment that you were or you are in your corporate or in your neighborhood. Out of all the people that you connected with, how many negative people are there? Yeah. Most, Most of them are negative. Right? They just crib and complain. They are not going to work, they are not going to work, they are not going to work, boss is not going to work, salary is not going to work, promotion is not going to work. The world is full of complaints. If you see there is so much of negativity there, how can a life thrive in the negative environment? It cannot. Like there is a you know, study also done. There was a small tree. Okay? And the tree goes to the tree, the person, जहाँ जाके बार-बार उसको गाली देता था कि यार ये है वो है खराब है ये है वो है and really पौधा मुरझा गया सब उसको दिया खाद पानी सब धूप सब है उसके पास but just because of the negative vibration negative energy पौधा dead plant was dead so the negativity is so powerful that it can can make the plant die imagine what it can do to all of us and we all have two brains. One is the conscious brain and one is subconscious brain. Has Amol explained yet? Yes. Not yet. Maybe briefly he might have explained, but he'll go deep in, in our coming sessions as well. All of us, we rely only on the conscious brain, which is our ability, which is the logical brain. Right? It, it decides what's right, what's not right. You know, what is good, what is bad. It has more logics in it. But majority of the success comes from where? Subconscious, Subconscious mind. How many of you have started, who, how many of you have actually been reading self-help books in the past, right? Now, you know, over a period of time, you also will be, uh, you know, getting suggestions from Amul, what books to read, when, right? Because one of the biggest challenges, we know self-help books is good, but we don't know which books to read when. <laughs> we start reading some book and said, oh, it's not completely aligned. Then we go to something else. So that is what's going to happen over a period of time. So one thing you need to know is your subconscious mind is very powerful. Your thoughts, your thinking, it comes from your subconscious mind. Right now, if you're sitting here, are you consciously putting an effort in your breathing? You're not. It's happening automatically. Are you putting conscious effort and heart pumping the blood? No, it's happening subconsciously. Everything that is happening in your body right now, if you see, now you're paying attention to it. Your subconscious mind went to it right now because I brought it to your attention. But it's happening through subconscious mind. The success also is the same way. 
success happens through the subconscious mind but the only way to put those thoughts in the subconscious mind which will help you to grow is by doing certain activities on regular basis and one of those thing is no negativity you got to have a filter in your conscious mind to remove all the negativity all the toxicity that you have in your life from today not to think negative not to talk negative not to do anything which is negative it is not going to help so in the in the family as well if you hear somebody talking negative it's your job to help that person realize that look is the thought that you're having is it positive or is it negative obviously person will say it's negative is it helping you or is it harming you oh, of course it's harming me so what should you do should you fix it or should you leave it say i should fix it aha moment i have a question yeah you have a question yes what if the other person is not <coughs> willing to listen you are trying to fix it yeah but you know they have a mindset that they just don't want to listen yeah that itself is a negative thought isn't it <laughs> you realize that self is a negative thought actually you can't control those things when the person is negative like i know one one thing for sure if they are here in the family they are open to learn and if somebody is not despite you sharing all those knowledge and all those things bring it to a most notice because as a parent he is responsible to make sure the environment is very positive and conducive right you you do your best right but even if you your best is not enough bring it to almost notice right and then you find a solution because one person if one person becomes negative trust me it's not going to be fun to work with each other it would it will only be fun when you everybody is on the same base same line how many of you are from outside of bombay oh only one person oh somebody is in uh, on, okay okay good but so most of you are in bombay great it's it's best place for you guys you guys are amazing you can meet and can collaborate very often which is a great thing so this is number one value this is a value no negativity any thought which comes any people that you see around if there's a negativity you need to weed it out you know you see when you planting a garden of rose there's no effort required to have those jungly plant what do you call it weeds. weeds there's no effort required weeds will automatically grow only the rose plants will need more attention nurture and care you're positive weeds automatically grow so is a negativity life mein dalne ki zarurat nahi hai already bahut sari hoti hai apne aap badhti jati hai but it's your conscious effort that if you want to grow a garden of rose you need to cut out those weeds from time to time post from your your thoughts from your life and then help others then to do the same thing and the way this version 2.0 is designed guaranteed that it will be very easy it, it provides you the tools the emanation techniques to remove the weeds from your life from time to time okay make sense yes the second value which is one of the most important value in my life as well what is it loyalty what do i mean by loyalty that loyalty in two areas one is loyalty towards yourself and the loyalty towards amol and the family both are very important when i say loyalty i have seen people are not even loyal to themselves how many of you actually made commitment to yourself but you broke everybody why because you're not even loyal to yourself and if you cannot be loyal to yourself how can you be loyal to others so the loyalty is one of the most important values that we all should have in life so when you say that i'm going to do something you should be loyal to your own <coughs> self if you say that you're going to wake up at 5:30 and you'll do your ritual you should be loyal to yourself because what you do when nobody is watching is what's going to decide how successful you will be it's easy to come here learn things and go away but if you're not loyal to yourself no, none of this thing will matter like last thing that you want is 
इतना पैसा डालने के बाद यू नो हजारों रुपए डालने के बाद यू डोंट गेट एनी रिजल्ट्स वन ऑफ दोज रीजन वुड बी योर लॉयल्टी टूवर्ड्स यू यू हैव टू बी एब्सोल्युटली लॉयल एंड ऑनेस्ट टू योर सेल्फ सेकेंड इज लॉयल टू अमोल एंड द फैमिली एंड एज ए लॉयल इज आई गो टू सच एन एक्सट्रीम लॉयल्टी आई फॉलो सम ऑफ माई गुरूज ग्रैंड कार्ड डोन एंड डैन लॉग ब्लाइंडली लाइक इफ दिस इज जम्प आई जस्ट जम्प I don't question them. I don't doubt them, because they have what I want. They have the lifestyle, they have the brand, they have the influence, they have the money, they have the happiness, they have the success, they have the family, they have the joy, they have the health, everything that they have. So when they have everything, and if I want all those things, if they're telling me to do something, I don't even question it. I just jump. That's the that's the extreme loyalty I'm talking about. And if you're not extremely loyal, then what's the point? of you even living if you're not loyal to yourself and if you're not loyal to your mentors what's the point what's the point of doing half you know half heartedly with your own way then you know then you were better off yourself then why do you need somebody else's guidance then so i am so extreme loyalist to my mentors that if somebody says something negative about my mentor that person becomes my enemy right if you say something about dan lock or grant cardone trust me you will be my enemy you will not hear from me that's how loyal i am and the interesting part is i've hardly met them once or twice that's the extreme loyalty i'm talking about i consume all their content i consume all their courses i consume all the post everything and i don't just listen to what they say i watch what they do and i replicate what that they they're doing is different listening to what your mentor is saying is one thing but watching what they do is another thing and you just replicate what they're doing if grand cardinal is waking up every day morning going to gym i watch it and i do it right i don't acquire the way they speak or talk i just acquire things which is the way they think If you ask me one of my secrets of success of fast tracking my growth is because I've acquired the ability to think like my mentors. And most often I remember I was in Vancouver recently uh called high ticket closer uh seminar 3 day seminar closer in black. I was there and and Sifu Dunlock he was presenting some of the ideas that people should implement. and he was talking about things that i was already thinking about like he was talking about how to build a different layers of your uh he's he was talking about how the stone age industrial age has changed and hampered the growth of human beings like wow this is exactly what i was thinking we are so thinking so alike you know alike now because now i realize subconsciously i started modeling him and now i started thinking like him most of the time he is ahead of the thinking but now i am ahead sometimes in his thought process and then say like, oh okay see i was thinking this just now and sifu also is talking about this so that's that will only come when you reach to the level where you are 100% loyal to your mentor and loyal to yourself you replicate what model is thinking acquire that person's habits right i'm sure you might have heard this formula if you want to be a millionaire then just think like a millionaire just think like a millionaire and replicate how the person thinks and it will not take long time for you to acquire a million dollars if you are already a millionaire and if you acquire the thought process of a mediocre person it will not take long for you to go mediocre in your life you see everything is there in the thinking and thought process So model your mentors and think how your mentors are thinking, and do what your mentor mentors are doing, and that's where you will grow. Okay. So second number is third thing. Third is. How many of you seen the the monks, the Shaolin monks? 
How many have seen the, the Navy Rangers like, um, what do you call the, the elite? US mein kaun sa hai? Navy SEALs. How many have you seen Navy SEALs? Nahi? Okay. Commandos, black commandos in India. Mein. Paramilitary. Paramilitary. What is common in all those people? Discipline. They are highly disciplined. They wake up early in the morning. They follow the meditation. They follow the workout routine. They push their limits. They do same thing over and over and over and over again. And that's why they become the elite. That's why they are unique. They are not the common men or common women. They are the elite. The Shaolin monks who do the Kung Fu Karate and all that thing, right? If you see, they take the coconut, Nariel Kasalia, with the one finger, they can poke and they can get the water out of it. Have you seen any of those videos? Watch our Shaolin monk. That's how powerful this one finger is. They can use a finger like a weapon. If if they use their this this part of their thing or even finger, if they jab you here, you're dead. You're dead. That's how powerful those monks are. But do you think they were born like this? No. The, how this this normal finger, like you try and do something with the finger, <laughs> all you'll have a swollen finger or a broken finger. <laughs> Right? Why these fingers? They're not born like this. They actually made those fingers like the weapons. Through the constant practice, through the constant discipline of doing the same move again and again and again. If you go to see how the monks are made, they right from the childhood they go to monastery. And they start living in the monastery. Very small age. And then, from the child, from that age itself, here's how the routine looks like. They wake up early in the morning, they do the meditation or chanting or whatever. And once that is done, they spend almost whole day practicing different moves. One of those moves at the beginning is they, they give a sand, the hot sand. All they have to do is, they do like this. Imagine doing this for whole day. Right? Whole day they're doing this. Next day, same thing. <laughs> same hot sand doing this. No improvement one day. No improvement two days. No improvement one week. No improvement one month. But six months. One year. Two years of doing this. Now imagine the hand that they would have built. Powerful. They actually slice through the throat as well. That's how tough they become. But it's all possible because of what? Self-discipline. So, as Bruce Lee, how many of you know Bruce Lee? You should know Bruce Lee. <laughs> Bruce Lee says that I'm not scared or afraid of a man who has practiced 11 different moves or 11 different kicks. But I would be afraid of a man who has practiced one move or one kick hundred times hundreds of times you see the difference yes that is called self-discipline so what you're going to learn there will be some moves that Amul is going to teach you the things that he's learned the ninja he's become monk of self-development now <laughs> okay he's got those moves he's going to he's going to give you the practices that you need to daily follow but if you don't have this self-discipline you're not going to become elite we're just going to be the, again the mediocre people, right? How many of you have invested in this program and this is the biggest self-development investment that you ever made? Raise your hand. Right? So this is, you realize that you put so much money on yourself. The last thing you want is no return at all. The only way you'll get the return is by following these some of these daily disciplines. Number four. What is it? Patience. patience. I don't know if the spelling is right or not, but it's patience. 
Now, what do I mean by patience? Big smile on this word, patience. I know I'm very impatient. Okay, okay. See, so we all want results fast but results does not come fast the monk who is practicing this he cannot expect the results within one week he cannot expect results even in one month not even one year when they commit to it they commit it for a lifetime that's why they become monk for life at least one decade two decades then they see the profound impact but here's the irony. People don't have patience in real life. You got to be aggressive, impatient in one zone, but patient in another. Patient, when it comes to patience, you should be patient for the outcomes and the results. But impatient, highly impatient in what area? Action. Action. Round of applause. Your action, you need to be very impatient in action. Massive, fast, 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 fast. Like when he's doing this, he's doing constantly. He's not doing this and waiting for half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> right? He's having patience in action. Right? And impatient result is going to be a bad, lethal, <laughs> bad combination which will not really help you. Right? So you need to have patience in terms of the outcome, the results. But impatient in terms of action, everyday massive action. If you combine these two, you'll go to the next level, right? That's number four. Now here's what has happened. Right from the childhood, we did not have the high self-esteem. It was actually broken, squeezed, thrown on the ground, stamped over, rubbed again and again. Our self-image, self-esteem ki dajiya aur chuki hai, right from our childhood. Very few people are, you know, were fortunate to have decent self-confidence right from the childhood. Now I'll tell you how. As soon as you got into school, your madam and your, your school teacher said you're not good enough. You are a child. You are a child. How many times you have failed? So your self-esteem starts from the childhood. From the childhood. And then when you fail in marks, in some tests and all, you are a child. Then you start getting comparison with others. And look. Look at their son. Look at their son. Look at their son. Then you start feeling low. Then you start feeling that you're not good enough. And with that feeling of not good enough, do you think you can go out there and you can win the world? You cannot know. So self-esteem has been broken so many times. As the version 2.0 family, your job is to make sure that your self-esteem is highest. When you walk inside the room, you walk inside a place, you should be oozing the confidence and the energy that people say, wow, I love that person's confidence. Who would love to be that? Yeah. That's what you need to build. And that's what you're going to learn over a period of time. But that has to become one of your highest values. Because if that is not your value, then you will not live up to the values. If you don't imbibe those values that I need to have high self-esteem, you will not. Some of you maybe want to become the coach, speaker, trainer, consultant. You want to start your own business. Anywhere you go, you got to have self-esteem. Now, a lot of people come and say, but Dave, I'm an introvert. Being an introvert has nothing to do with self-esteem, by the way. If you go to see, 80% of the rich and successful people in this world, they're introverts. Mark Zuckerberg, Steve Jobs was an introvert, Bill Gates was an introvert, Jeff Bezos was an introvert, Jack Ma is an introvert, Tesla, yeah, Elon Musk, Elon Musk is an introvert. You see, the richest people on this earth, they are introverts. And here we are, 
giving ourselves an excuse that you know, oh, I'm an introvert. I cannot have high self-esteem. These people have high self-esteem. Warren Buffett, introvert. You name it, all the top people. They are all introverts. So don't think that I'm an introvert so I cannot have self-esteem. Everybody can have self-esteem, whether you are introvert or extrovert. It does not matter. It's good if you're an extrovert, if you're outgoing personality. But it's not bad if you're introvert. But when I'm on stage, nobody can make out whether I'm introvert or not. I own the stage. I own the place. Right? So I don't hesitate when I'm here. Because, why? Because? Self-esteem. Self High self-esteem. Let me tell you how the self-esteem is built so that you know what is the mechanism of how self-esteem is built. So if this is the self-esteem, the self-esteem comes from comes from where? Self-confidence. Self it comes from self-confidence. Where does the self-confidence come from? Comes from where? Self-belief. Self when you believe in yourself, you automatically have self-confidence. And you have self-confidence, you become self, you know, have self-esteem. But where would the self-belief come from? Very close. Somebody said from here. Self what? Self respect. Very close. Knowledge. Very close. Self image. <laughs> this is what has been broken from a lot of you. You don't look up to yourself and say that you are the best. That's why the exercise that Amol is teaching, I love, I love myself, I'm the best, right? That improves your self-image. And what happens is, you are consciously putting those words into your subconscious mind. Because this self-image is what? It's not in conscious mind. It's in subconscious mind. The root of the self-image is subconscious mind. So when you say the signal of, I'm the best, I'm the best. What happens is, it's sending the signal to the self-image that yes, you are the best. Yes, you are the best. See, here's the saying. You cannot outperform your own self-image. Write this down. You cannot outperform your own self-image. Does it make sense? Like if you think you're a millionaire, you only will become a millionaire. If you think you're a billionaire in your mind, you will become a billionaire. Because what happens is, your self-image results in emotions. There's a circle. <coughs> If you have higher self-esteem, which comes from self-image, what kind of emotions would you have? Positive or negative? Positive. 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 You will feel that anything is possible. I think nothing is impossible. I can break the world. I can do a lot of things. I can put a dent in the universe like Steve Jobs. High self-esteem he had. Right? He can believe, believe that I can do different things in life and I can do, I can change the world. Okay? So when, the, when this, this is positive, Emotions will be positive. When the emotions are positive, what kind of actions would you take? Mediocre or massive? Massive, massive action. So you see, your action also will be very high. And when your actions are high, what kind of results would you produce? Mediocre or great results? Great. Your output will be great. 
when your output is great, when the results are great, what would it do to your self-image? Increase or decrease? Increase. You see, it's a circle. Now let's put this in a negative perspective. What if the person's self-image or self-esteem is weak? What kind of emotion he would have? Negative or positive? Negative. Negative. I'm not good enough. I don't think I can do it. I think it's, it's difficult. If that emotion that he, the person has, you know, he's like, I don't think it's going to work. Let me still try. What kind of action that person will have? Mediocre or massive? Mediocre. 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 And the mediocre action will result in mediocre results or massive results? Mediocre. mediocre. When the mediocre results come, or the bad results come, what would it do to your self-image or self-esteem? So you see, you will not be able to come out of this loop. The root cause is this. But most of the people, they focus where? They only focus here. They think if I just take action, everything will be But your action is good. But first you need to fix your self-esteem, self-image. Then you're, you know, this is the formula of becoming successful. So over a period of time, whatever Amul is going to share with you, the exercises, the daily rituals, the tasks, mm -hmm. the books that you need to read, it will all be driven to focus on this. If you get this, you will have positive emotions. With this, you'll have positive massive action. You'll have massive results. Guaranteed, after six months, you would not be the same person as you are today. How many of you would, would love that? Like, we all want you to be a different version of yourself. That's why the program itself is version 2.0. You will think different. You will act different. You will look different. And the people around you will say, Yaar, tum badal gayo. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, they will say, because Right? That's what's going to happen to you in the next six months. But here's the thing. Ups and down will come. You deserve at least six months for your own better life. Don't drop the ball in the middle and start judging yourself. This is what exactly happens. People start judging themselves here. Because weak self-image negative emotions or lack of emotions mediocre mediocre action here so they start judging themselves too early like the monk <laughs> they will not think of just one one two one right? they, they look at the long time patience long years so you got to have the patience for at least six months like what you've not achieved in next last 20 or 30 years at least it takes six months to achieve right what has not happened in 20 years? See, here's the problem. We, what we not done in 20 years, you want in one month. And you expect a lot of results within one month. So do I have your commitment that you will at least give yourself six months? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Without judging yourself, without judging your output, without judging your results. Give six months and then see what happens. Guaranteed, a lot of things will change in your life. Six months can happen. So let's come to this. How much time do I have? Yeah, question so, is. is self-respect is similar to the self-esteem or is there Yes, absolutely. Self-respect also is the self-esteem. It's part of subsection of self-esteem. Right? So so if you look at this, then there's a self-respect, self-love, then comes self-esteem. So if you see self-respect is the minimum, the core to have the self-esteem like if you cannot respect yourself you cannot love yourself if you cannot love yourself you cannot have self-esteem so good question round of applause <laughs> now there are three more aspect one of those one of those important aspect of the values is What is it? 
Everybody, Jor say, what is it? See, right from the childhood, we've been brought up like third class. <laughs> right? Adjust kar lo, chalta hai, aray, ho sakta hai, it's not good, good for you, it's fine, give it up. But nobody taught us to think like a world class, to look like world class, and to act like world class. So let's break it down. Thinking like a world class. You need to think like you're going to run an Olympics. And you're not just there, gully cricket. You got to think like the world class. Imagine Virat Kohli not thinking like world class. Do you think he'll practice like world class? He will not get results also than world class. So if you need to become Virat Kohli or Sachin Tendulkar, you need to think like world class. Then second is look world class. You got to have great suits. You need to invest in your suits and all. Good outfit. Because trust me, here's what I learned from one of my business partner, Ron Malhotra. I don't know, have you heard Ron Malhotra? Yes. Yeah? Okay. What I've heard from Ron is he said that when you wear a suit or a jacket or a blazer, your body temperature goes up by 3%. But your self confidence, your image goes up 3,000%. Your perceived value goes up 3,000%. You see, that's how important being dressed is. So if you don't have suits, buy suits. Invest in that. It's an investment. Bachman say, Achha feel karne ke liye baut, dikhane ke liye baut kar liya. Abhi is now to go the world class level. To buy more suits. So next time when you're coming for physical session, I want to see everybody in a suit. Do I have your commitment? Yes. yes. Great suits. Don't cut corners in suits. Because you don't know what you're leaving on the table. Be the best dressed person. See, there's no effort to look mediocre. There's no effort to just put t-shirt and jeans and just walk away. But when you're wearing a suit, it takes an effort. Shirt iron karna parta hai, pant iron karni parti hai. You know, you need to wear proper suits. You need to sometimes have cufflinks as well. You know, you need to have pockets and you know, so many things. Moment you put that effort, which required 10, 15 minutes more than the being casual, itself sends the right signal to all the people. It says that, you know what? You are serious. You're world class. You see, you get different attention. You walk into any shop wearing a suit versus wearing a floater and, you know, casuals. You get a different level of attention. How many of you experienced it? Yeah. Same thing. That's called the world class level of looking. Then third is act world class. What do I mean by acting world class? Body language. Body language. Your choices that you make should be world class. Stop going to the local tapris. The local tea stalls. You know why? Because who comes to those local? Have you seen Jaguar park there? Somebody getting down and having a local tea, the tapri ka chai. Have you seen BMW, Mercedes standing, cycle mein wo jo chai leke ghoomte na udar? Raat ko agera. Have you seen those people, Mercedes wale aake chai pire? No. So what, who stops there? All the people who are mediocre people. People who are frustrated with the job, frustrated with their life. You see the conversation that goes on there? Aray yaar, ye bill bharna tha. Ye karna tha, wo karna tha, boss ne ye bol diya, ye bol diya, wo bol diya. See, the environment itself is so bad, so negative. It's not world class in any standard. So next time when you have to have choice of the places to go to, things that you have to do, think of world class. Even if you have to have tea, it's okay to spend one or two hundred rupees and go to a decent place than to you know, spend 20, 30 rupees in local tapri. Because it's doing more damage to you than you know, to your subconscious mind. Because you're sending wrong signal, it's picking all the wrong garbage in your head. All the complaints, cribbing, you know, crying, 
it's picking all those negative vibes and energy so pick up abundance places pick up the places where you can go and you don't have to now i'm not asking you to spend thousands of rupees and do all that just few hundreds extra you deserve it how many people believe that you deserve it yeah you deserve a better life you deserve a better lifestyle so treat yourself to better places time to time like every month you should have like you know i'll go to this place i'll save some money and i'll go to this place to just feel the abundance you see that being in that environment nicely suited it will just take your thought process to a different level your action will go to a different level right go and do that when you go for watching a movie go for vip go watch in recliners you see how you feel how many if you go to vip yeah you see this is a different feeling the treatment that you get itself is different right you'll have bottle nice bottles kept there you know pillows recliners and then kambal bhi dete hain fir rajai mein you know nicely you feel that you're worth it your vip that's world class when you feel pampered like this your thought process will go to a different level not to cramp up places iski koni lag rahi hai uski koni lag rahi hai iska pasina re yaar kaun hai ye पसीने वाला बदबूदार क्रैम्प्ड अप यू नो यू वाचिंग द मूवी और बदबू आ रही है नाक बंद करके मूवी देख रहे हो तुम एंड देन बदबू भी चली जाती है यू गेट यूज्ड टू द स्मेल कुछ टाइम के बाद बिकॉज़ वो मीडिया कर दिमाग में घुस गया है तुम्हारे हाउ मेनी वी बीन देयर या या वी ट्रैवल बाय लोकल ट्रेन्स एंड यू नो बसेस एंड ऑल द क्राउडेड एंड ऑल थोड़ा स्पेंड करके टैक्सी में जाओ इट्स फाइन लाइक आई एम नॉट आस्किंग यू टू डू इट एवरीडे राइट इफ यू हैव अ लॉन्ग रूट एंड यू आर ट्राइंग सेविंग दैट्स फाइन बट गो टू a better segment first class or whatever treat yourself better way that's what world class people do so which are the other two which you are missing massive actions massive actions massive action was not massive action is by default massive action is by default that you have to have okay without that you cannot change okay so any questions in this so far yes sir to adding uh, adding to your point of the thing that you said you can see people uh, in a bmw or a mercedes having uh, chai near that uh, cycle shop but i have noticed one thing i have not seen people who own a bmw but i have seen their kids there uh huh in a bmw or a range or just hanging out with friends at 2 or 3 am in the morning yeah, yeah. so they are not the world class their parents are world class yes okay but are they being pampered to that extent that they are world class by their parents see here's the thing it would not do more damage to them i'll tell you why because when they come to tapri it's just out of the blue once in a while their environment and house is more conducive of growth and success and money and abundance that's true they only go there once in a while but here our life and our house is also mediocre our friends are also mediocre environment mediocre and on top of that you go to tapri to put more mediocrity to it yes. for them it will not do more damage for us it will do more they do it out of fun we do out of necessities how many are moment yeah it's true good question Action. good question extreme motion yes extreme ownership what is extreme ownership taking full responsibility of our uh, action yeah everything that has happened everything that has happened is happened because of me not to me you see there's a different thought process yeah everything has happened to me is a victim mindset but everything happens because of me is the ownership mindset like for example you're walking i'll give you an example you're walking on the road somebody came and bashed you or you're just standing on the road side of the road must footpath pe some car or somebody came and dashed you whose fault it is whose fault Nee 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 whose fault is that? How many say it's driver's fault? 
No! That's what you need to change your thought process right now. Why you are standing there in the first place then? You could have done something different or you could have been more careful that car is coming, let me just step aside. <laughs> See, that is the extreme ownership example. Can you change that person? Can you change that person's action? No. So by just being victim, saying that, oh, it's his fault, it happened to me. How is that going to help you? But rather if you take an extreme ownership that I should be more careful and I should be more visible, you know, looking around. Be careful with the environment. I was at the place, wrong time, wrong place. I should take the ownership. I should have been there either earlier or later. Or I should be more careful. That is extreme ownership example. Now agree? Everybody agree? Yes. Yeah? Aha moment, everybody? Yeah. That's the extreme ownership example I'm telling you. Okay, so when Amul is giving you some task, right, you got to take the extreme ownership of that task. Don't expect Amol to chase you like a you know master G with a stick. Kya 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 kya. You know, if he's doing that, I know he will still do that. But if he has to do that, that means you are failing here. You're not imbibed, you're not living extreme ownership life. You're not taking extreme ownership of your life. Look, if Amol is more committed to change your life than you are, then there's something fundamentally wrong. He already has a better life. He already has version 2.0. If he's taking more ownership than all of you, then there's something wrong. You should take more ownership than him because it's your life. So extreme ownership is one of those values that if you're not, you know, living this, yes. I don't worry uh, regarding this particular aspect only, yep. which actually I actually had in my mind since uh, last few weeks. Sure. Uh, till last few months I have been having a thought process that anything is happening in my life is due to me and I am the one who is responsible for that so I need to rectify myself and the same applies to somebody else if something is going wrong with some particular person it's just because of him and I am not supposed to indulge into that mm -hmm. okay okay so let what is happening to him continue to happen yeah. Unless and until I'm not doing anything wrong in my life, nothing is going to happen wrong in my life and I'm very much focused on that. Mm. Okay. Mm. So, for the last few years rather, uh, I was very much happy, satisfied with this particular mindset and approach. Right. Okay. And uh, all of a sudden now, because we are uh, having a shift last few months, we, we are now not only to think about our own self, but we are also about to think about people around us. Yes. Yes. So we are trying to bring a change to the world on the whole. Yes. Now this is somehow conflicting my thought process earlier. Ah, got it, got it. Okay, why should I indulge into somebody else's matters? Yeah. Let them face that what is happening to them. Good, good, mm -hmm. good, good one. Very nice. Round of applause. Now, I mean, uh, how how right to handle that? And I am right now. I mean, yeah, yeah. So how to handle that? You're saying, you're saying, yeah, yeah. is that the question? How do you handle this situation? So here's the thing, I've learned a lot of people, like one person in one of my workshops says that Dave, your mission is to transform 1 billion lives. Yeah, why, are you, why are you not reaching out to more people and giving things for free and helping all the people? Why your program are, you know, running into multi-lakhs? Like one of my mentorship programs, you know, goes from 4-5 four, 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 lakh. One person, 4-5 lakh per person. So you say, why are you not helping other people? You should be helping a lot of people, that's your mission. To which I said that, I'm ready to help only those who are helping themselves. So I'm here to help people, yes. But I'm not here to help people who are not ready to help themselves. So I'll inspire them with my action. I'll inspire them with my results. But I will not go and push them and talk to them when they're not even ready to change. So before you pour more water in somebody else's cup, you got to have your cup full. You need to pour more in your cup first. So first you transform yourself. And when you're transforming yourself, you showcase this action that is happening and you keep sharing with the social media and other people and all. And let other person say, how did you do it? Like, how did you become version 2.0? Then you help them. Proactively, you know, it's going to be opposite. You'll be demotivated. Actually. He will convert your mind that why you should not do it. <laughs> he will say that no, 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 it's all waste. All of gyan hota hai success in self development. Make sense? Yes. Yeah. yeah.
Last but not the least is what? Courage. 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 All of you have shown courage by investing in yourself. It's not easy. It's not easy to invest thousands of rupees in your self-development. You invest in an intangible thing. Yeah. See, there is not a product that you know you can touch and feel and you know test it. You invest in it yourself, which is intangible. It's invisible. It's somewhere within you, but you don't know it yet. So that itself requires a courage. Taking a leap of faith and leap of belief. That takes courage. But it's not enough. You've just shown the first level of courage. You have to go to different levels now. When you start making videos, it will be a different level of courage. When you start doing the workshops or, or doing your business, it will require a different level of courage. In business, you require three, three organs, vital organs to use. Three organs. Any guesses what are the three vital organs to use maximum in the business? First is money. No, no, organs, body Brains. organs. Brain, heart. Brains, <laughs> heart, and there's one more most important element. It's your yeah. gut. The so gut is where courage is comes from. So brain is where you do the logical thought process and all, and the heart is where you have emotional connect, EQ, and the gut is where the courage lies. A lot of people don't use the gut so they never start the business. They don't start the self-development journey. Some people who use the gut and other organs, but they don't know which order to use in. Do you know which order to start with? They start with brain first, and they try to put, put the heart somewhere. They start with brain first, and they try to put the heart somewhere. You did? <laughs> you did? Okay, good. See, now you realize it, right? We all learn from mistakes. We start from the brains. Oh, the business is good, the opportunity is good, the money is good, the profit is good, the market is good, the margin is good, there is no competition. Oh, look, it's good, it's good. He's using the logical brain for that. Right? And then somewhere, let's go, I'm going to hurt my heart or I'm going to hurt my heart. That's the wrong order. You've got to start with heart. You've got to start with heart. Then use the brain. Then have the gut or stomach. That's the order. You see, that's why you all are connected to Amor. Because he started with heart. Most of you said that I saw the failure. Right? You said that I want what he, you know, he's become. Right? You, they've seen one and a half years, the journey of Amol. So your heart got connected to Amol first. And then you saw his business acumen, how he closed you and convinced you. Right? Now you're seeing his gut as well. Like he's got courage to do the workshops on his own cost. He did not charge you guys anything when he did the free workshops. You see, he used his heart first, used his brain, put a strategy of how my mentorship program will work, how, many, how will I get people, how many people I'll get, and then he brought the gut, courage to invest the money and put the money first before you can expect more money. So when you are in the version 2.0, when you're going to grow, you got to use all three organs. But most importantly, this is what is missing in most of the people. They don't have courage. They don't have self-belief, self-image. So when the time comes, like a lot of people, if you see hundreds of people attended this workshop, right? Why only you invested? Because most of the people lack courage. On the surface, they said, I lack finances. But reality is the courage which was missing, not the finances. Like I know all of you also were struggling with the finances, but you found it because you had high courage. You had high self-esteem, high self-belief in, your, in yourself first and then in a mode. And that the combination of all three comes into picture. So these are the values that you imbibe by, you will become unstoppable, okay? So, Eight values okay make sure you write down these values and make sure you live by those values every day in every aspect of your life if you just focus on this this itself is going to be more than enough for you to become version 2.0 what Amol is going to teach you probably you'll go to 3.0 <laughs> right any questions and this okay self-image self-esteem that's it good thank you Now you know how did I grow because of this wisdom. Whatever he has taught me, I've implemented in my life. When I got the results, that's the reason I'm teaching you. 
and you know my journey the way i taught about the 30 days program the way we did the morning ritual so i have got the results him singh has got the results couple of guys has got the mentors and that's the reason i'm teaching you the same thing in a very different concept so and we all are blessed to start session with dev sir and i know now this i've created a positive world i was very nervous but again now i'm in josh